Buongiorno a tutti, eh, io sono Riccardo Tribuzio dell'Università di Pavia, sono una delle persone che ha eh, organizzato questa serie di seminari eh, dedicati alla divulgazione dei programmi scientifici IODP che sta per International Ocean Discovery Program e ICDP che sta per International Continental Scientific Drilling Program. E vogliamo con questa serie di seminari diciamo, promuovere ver nei confronti della comunità di scienze geologiche italiana questi programmi e quindi intendiamo essenzialmente e mostrare quali sono le prospettive di ricerca nel prossimo futuro in questi ambiti di perforazioni scientifiche e mostrare anche rivelare come sia possibile partecipare a questi programmi scientifici e poi ehm, anche no, eh, non solo diciamo eh, divulgare alcuni dei principali risultati scientifici raggiunti dai ricercatori italiani in tempi recenti sia nell'ambito EODP sia nell'ambito ICDP. Quindi questa è la serie di seminari, oggi eh, ci parlerà essenzialmente dei programmi ICDP però abbiamo in programma ancora altri cinque seminari e in particolare in aprile eh, ci saranno due seminari, il primo tenuto da Laura De Santis dell'Istituto Nazionale di Oceanografia e Geofisica Sperimentale di Trieste e il secondo che sarà tenuto da Francesca Meneghini dell'Università di Pisa. Poi altri due eh, seminari online eh, saranno tenuti a maggio, il primo da Alessio San Filippo dell'Università di Pavia e il secondo da Lauro Chiara Luce dell'Istituto Nazionale di Geofisica e Vulcanologia. L'ultimo seminario sarà all'inizio di giugno e riguarderà diciamo, in generale le opportunità di ricerca nell'ambito IODP, soprattutto nell'ambito IODP e sarà tenuto da eh, Elisabetta Erba dell'Università di Milano alla Statale e da Angelo Camerlenghi dell'Istituto Nazionale di Oceanografia e Geofisica Sperimentale. A questo punto io ehm, ho semplicemente appunto introdotto questa serie di seminari che abbiamo organizzato come Commissione CNR e IODP Italia e passo però la parola a ehm, Fabio Florindo che è il moderatore scientifico, è un, uno dei co-organizzatori co della, della serie di seminari e in particolare oggi sarà il moderatore scientifico della, eh, del seminario online di oggi. Quindi cedo la parola a Fabio Florindo dell'Istituto Nazionale di Geofisica e Vulcanologia. Prego. Thank you Riccardo. Can you show the next slide? Yes. Ok, it is my great pleasure to introduce you to Ulrich Harms. Uli is leading the operational support group of the International Continental Scientific Drilling Program, ICDP, at the GFZ in Potsdam, Germany. Uli holds a master's degree in mineralogy from Kiel University and a PhD in geochemistry and geochronology from the Technical University of Berlin. Is working group leader in the section Geomechanics and Scientific Drilling of GFZ leads the German Scientific Earth Probing Consortium and is co-founder and editor of the journal Scientific Drilling. He is expert in scientific drilling and he is involved in instrument development with a focus on downhole tools. Today, his talk will focus on recent operations and key achievements of the International Continental Scientific Drilling Program and highlight upcoming ICDP projects in Italy. In addition, this presentation will provide insight in how to partake in the program and create ICDP funded projects. Thank you. I leave the word to Uli. Thank you very much, Ricardo. Thank you, Fabio. Um, it's a great pleasure for me to talk about ICDP. 
in Italy and Italy in ICDP, and I'm hoping that I will be able to provide some scientific entertainment in uh, challenging times. Um, we had issues with the presentation, so um, we tried to do it in PDF mode, and I'm hoping you can see my screen um, in a good manner. I'm trying to speak slow. Uh, we are all not native English speakers, um, but do not hesitate if there is a, a problem uh, with uh, transmission of voice or um, video to let me know or interrupt me for any other issues. Okay, um, I'm going to talk um, about uh, the oops, ICDP, the International Continental Scientific Drilling Program. What is it? It's an international managed and operated earth science infrastructure. It has a head office at the GFZ in Potsdam, and it facilitates excellent science by continental drilling. Um, the idea is to address fundamental geoscientific challenges that are of global significance and societal relevance. Uh, and this is the top-down approach, but on the other hand, there's also a bottom-up approach, and that is that ICDP completely is relying on projects that are created by independent groups uh, and that submit unsolicited proposals to ICDP. All ICDP member countries send delegates to the panels running the program. ICDP is existing now since almost 25 years. Uh, the mission is to generate the most exact and, exact and fundamental globally significant knowledge on structure of Earth through the unique cap capabilities of scientific drilling. And as you see here on the world map, ICDP has been pretty active uh, in the past two decades. Um, mainly everywhere on all continents, except on uh, Antarctica and Australia. I know that uh, Fabio is working on this, uh, but this will give us problems to show Antarctica on such a map um, as well. Um, okay, so um, the program is funded by its member countries. Um, and, and you see that there are currently 21 members. Uh, one of course is, is Italia. The annual budget that uh, ICDP is collecting from these member countries is about $4 million. Uh, what is ICDP doing in the recent past? Of course, we had problems related to COVID-19. Uh, nevertheless, it was possible to drill uh, two projects in, in Europe. Uh, one is uh, the JET project and the other one is the COSC. And then there are ongoing projects However, um, on the agenda of uh, the program are several other projects, and you see here um, a clumsing of red dots in, in Europe, and that is related to uh, projects that are ongoing in Italy mainly and um, in um, Scandinavia, and there are, of course, some others. And I would like to walk you through these programs in the next couple of minutes to show what it's go was, what's going on. And I would also like to mention, because this is an IODP triggered seminar, that in contrast to IODP, ICDP offers also scientific workshops. Um, and uh, these workshops are held in preparation of uh, individual projects and help to form um, a big international team. So uh, let's have a look to Italy. Um, I was pretty surprised when yesterday I uh, started to collect some of the data uh, about the participation of Italy. Uh, we have 251 Italian scientists involved in 70 international proposals to ICDP, 10 proposals for research in, in, in Italy itself, including 93 scientists, 20 scientists partake, uh, were partaking in uh, the training courses that ICDP's operational support group is offering. And in addition, Italian principal investigators are leading several upcoming international projects. So you see here four arrows, and I hope I find the time to address these four arrows in a little bit more detail to let you know what's going on in the country. ICDP has recently 
um, refurbished is its science plan. The science plan has the title Billions of Years of Earth Evolution uh, and is driven by the societal challenges to humankind, climate and ecosystems, natural hazards, and sustainable georesources. The four topics of ICDP are these georesources, environmental change, geohazards, and geodynamic processes. And in the following, I would like to show you uh, some of the examples in the framework of, of these themes. So the first, geodynamic processes. Uh, why are we looking at that? Because we want to know how and when did plate tectonics initiate? What controlled the developments of Earth's hydrosphere, atmosphere, biosphere system? How did life originate? So very fundamental questions that ICDP wants to address. Um, I would like to show one example from Scandinavia. This is a, a COSC project, Collisional Orogeny in the Scandinavian Caledonites. The principal idea is that the Caledonites are a 3,000 kilometer long band of um, um, 400 million years old origin. And in Scandinavia, this origin has been deeply eroded. So we see the, the crustal, the deep crustal roots uh, of um, how this basement has, uh, how, how this origin has been formed and how it was brought to the basement. And there are two drilling projects in two um, different sites trying to drill through different NAP systems. Uh, last year, ICDP drilled 2,267 meters uh, during the summer to recover uh, some of, of, of these series. Um, the idea was to understand in detail what was known from uh, seismic data. Um, I show here two different interpretations of these seismic data. And the principal uh, background was uh, to confirm or to disapprove uh, these hypotheses, uh, how it was formed. And as a matter of fact, the cores recovered were indeed not the ones that were, accept, uh, that were expected. Uh, and I guess this is typical for a scientific drilling that you always get something different. Um, the beauty of uh, this project, for example, is uh, that it was a real, um, very nice example of core log seismic integration, where uh, the reasons of um, the different reflections that can be seen from seismic data could be highlighted by looking in detail at the course, looking at the logs, um, and trying to integrate that into seismic data. And that is pretty important for future interpretation um, of similar data. Um, ICDP looks back in time. I mentioned that. Um, one of the upcoming projects is drilling in the Babaton Greenstone Belt to understand early oxygenation and surface processes because there, there is a fantastic fluvial to prodeltic siliclastic series that is almost four kilometers six and that uh, thick and that has been deposited in short time. And in addition, and now I come to the first Italian project uh, that is uh, supposed to start uh, hopefully next year, and that is drilling the Ivrea Verbano zone uh, in, in northern Italy to understand uh, really what, what happened here uh, with this uh, giant Permian intrusion, how uh, the mafic and uh, silicic uh, materials in, in the magma chamber generated. Um, and, and rose into the crust. But the main problem uh, will be uh, what, what is really the uh, crust mantle transition. And three drill holes are planned. Uh, next year, there will be these two short drill holes in the more silicic uh, and sedimentary part in, in the deeper magma chamber. And finally, a deep well um, to get into um, the, trans, uh, the, the transition from crest uh, to mantle. Okay, let's look to the next topic, geohazards. Um, what we want to see is what are the drivers and in initiating controlling earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, mass movements. Um, how do earthquakes nucleate, propagate and stop? These are key questions. And I would like to show you uh, some examples. 
Uh, I have to go back uh, about 15 years uh, when the San Andreas Fault Zone Observatory at DEPS project started in ICDP, simply because this was a lighthouse project that initiated several other projects coming up later. Um, the goal was to drill through the San Andreas Fault itself and sample um, the fault and monitor the fault. Uh, the, the location chosen was, was on a very prominent site uh, close to a little town called Parkfield where uh, the locked part of the fault is going into a um, creeping part of the fault. And the idea was to drill through this fault, this is the fault zone, and find here repeating micro earthquakes um, that, that could be drilled. Uh, that was a very successful um, project at the end, uh, simply because uh, there were calls from the active fault zone and active deformation could be observed. You see here uh, observations of casing deformation in the well, and this helped to identify precisely the location of the earthquakes um, uh, and, and the deformation. So uh, this was a very, very successful um, project and that started other people to think about uh, the next uh, step simply because there was a large number of uh, lessons learned um, about the mechanics of fault, uh, the fault as a barrier for fluids, um, the partition, partitioning of, of deformation, locked versus creep, uh, composition of the fault, uh, it turned out that the minerals play a major role uh, whether a fault is is creeping um, and uh, several other issues as well um, one of the bigger projects coming after was uh, the coiner project in india um, here is a wonderful situation that um, wonderful for seismologists that uh, earthquakes repeat each year when an artificial reservoir fills up uh, due to uh, the, the, the strong um, rainfall uh, during the monsoon times and trigger earthquakes. Uh, a three kilometer well was drilled already and a six to seven kilometer well cross-cutting the fault is underway and in, in preparation. Um, another topic is um, observatory. Uh, not crossing the fault itself, but looking into um, getting the ear closer to uh, where the seismicity happens. What you see here is the Northern Anatolian fault uh, that has a westward drift of prominent earthquakes, and that is um, an excellent example of um, for monitoring earthquakes. Um, ICDP funded a project that was called GODAF, uh, the Plate Boundary Observatory, in a section that so far was not active in, uh, in the past couple of decades. Uh, to decipher the driving physical processes, monitor micro seismicity, and develop near uh, real time earthquake forecasting approaches. Um, several uh, shallow wells were drilled here. And these wells, uh, just to 300 meter depths, were equipped uh, with uh, seismic array tools uh, and, and, and other instrumentation. And uh, the results so far are extremely promising. Uh, for example, uh, a seismic patch, an a, sorry, an aseismic patch was identified in the Princess Island segment here. Uh, and that is locked and uh, likely to uh, produce a, a major earthquake, then um, systematic foreshock activities could be identified that precede um, magnitude four to six earthquakes and further on slow slip events in, in conjunction with enhanced seismicity could be identified uh, that has never been uh, really monitored in such depths before. Um, so there is a large number of fault zone drilling and monitoring uh, projects and you see here a long list. I, I just mentioned uh, here Seyford, um, I mentioned Koina and um, Gonaf and there's one going on in, in Italy and um, 
as I just heard, Lauro Chiara Luce is going to uh, talk about that uh, in a, a few weeks' time, so I don't have to go into detail. Uh, but the, the STARS strain meter array along the, along the Alto Tiberina fault system is an ICDP-funded project. Everything is, is ready to go um, as soon as the corona uh, situation permits, and I'm, I'm really hoping and looking forward that this uh, works soon. Okay, let's go to the topic uh, georesources. Uh, this is an obvious uh, thing that uh, earth sciences should address. How can we improve our understanding of and gain an access to low carbon energy resources. Um, this, this is uh, without question a very uh, important topic for science. Uh, and I I'm choosing here one example of a previous drilling in, in Italy, the Campi Fregredi drilling project, where uh, next to um, hazard issues, uh, there was a volcanic hazard, of course, due to the uh, uplift uh, in the area. Uh, close to Naples. There was also a, a, a geothermal um, uh, objective here. Um, one of the results, for example, is that uh, there is a smaller area affected by the caldera collapse. After a 500 meter well has been drilled here uh, on the eastern edge of the Gulf of Pozzuoli. Um, and, um, Unfortunately, a, a deep well, as designed uh, originally down to three kilometers to cross-cut the brittle ductile transition, could not be achieved due to permitting and, and uh, issues and um, public awareness issues. Um, but let's look to the future. Um, ICDP has um, a an, an really very interesting and challenging project in the pipeline now. Uh, that is uh, about volcano monitoring, uh, geothermal potential, and how to manipulate magma. The background is that in northern Iceland, um, an ICDP well was drilled uh, to go close to a magma chamber that you see here in blue colors. But um, instead of going here to three kilometers to observe uh, supercritical fluids, they found magma at just 2,100 meters. And there was a short uh, transition from um, subsolid or felsitic rocks into aphoric rhyolitic magma uh, in, in this area, about 900 degrees hot. Uh, and the idea is now uh, to um, redrill the well, stabilize it with new techniques and um, investigate magma physics, um, estimate the volcanic hazard potential, uh, forecast eruptions, and of course to use uh, the geothermal um, uh, energy and, and, and try this in a test bed. Uh, so a ma Krafla magma test bed will be a long-term project and we are hoping that uh, a first well uh, with monitoring devices can be installed in uh, two years time. Environmental change um, is, of course, a topic that uh, everyone has, has in mind if it comes to earth sciences. What can we learn from past greenhouse conditions? What is the role of the sub subsurface uh, biosphere? These are key questions uh, that are addressed through uh, projects uh, that um, drill for climate archives of the past. Um, I would like to mention um, two or three projects. One is uh, Lake Elke Gitkin here in northeastern Siberia, an impact crater that was created 3.7 million years ago. And the deposits that were um, laid down in, in this crater were never affected by glaciation, which is uh, pretty unusual for uh, the Arctic area. So it offered a fantastic archive uh, that provided um, excellent uh, results um, from uh, the drilling that ICDP was able to do from ice. You see here the um, covered um, drill rig. Um, another one closer to Italy is Lake Orrit, um, which is also an unprecedented recorder of climate. Um, Lake Orrit is uh, one of the oldest lakes in uh, Europe here in Macedonia, close to the Albanian border. And 
it again has a long history, 1.4 million years at least, and uh, the results are, are really spectacular uh, because in high resolution, uh, for example, uh, the precipitation uh, patterns of the past could be identified or very wet faces as, uh, as shown here. Um, and uh, these lake dwelling projects in ICDP, you see here a number on the world map, were um, absolutely uh, important for the development of the program. Uh, ICDP has constructed a, a lake drilling tool. Uh, you see that here on, on the Dead Sea. And these efforts on uh, lake drilling are going on, especially in uh, the tropics of um, Africa and South and Central America so far. But there's also a project uh, with a strong Italian contribution, which is called uh, DAF, drilling over deepened alpine valleys. Uh, the idea is to get access to uh, these sediments that have been produced by lakes and glaciers um, in these very deep valleys. Um, you all know uh, the maps uh, around um, uh, the Alps where th there are several uh, deep lakes that hold these uh, sediments and uh, the idea is to drill in several locations around the Alps um, and um, try to understand the different phases of uh, glaciation and glacial retreat. So there are a number of sites, two will be drilled uh, this year on the northern edge of the Alps in uh, Switzerland and, and Germany. And there's also um, an interest um, in Italy uh, to drill a bonus site. Um, in, in, in this area, uh, because it, it is uh, containing a lot of marine strata and uh, is going back in time for at least 500,000 years uh, in, in a condensed um, 300 meter deep uh, section, it would be possible um, to uh, retrieve data uh, in, until uh, Pliocene times. Um, but ICDP is also going back deeper in time. Um, the integrated understanding of the early Jurassic project drilled here in uh, Western England, close to the Welsh border, to reconstruct a fully integrated stratigraphy for the marine early Jurassic, um, a time that was um, very turbulent uh, in, in terms of climate. And they were able to recover uh, down to 650 meters uh, the lower Jurassic until uh, the upper Triassic uh, with excellent core recovery and fantastic microfossils. So uh, one important point um, with uh, ICDP is the collaboration uh, with the partner program offshore, um, IODP. Um, already uh, during the setup of the new science plan of ICDP and IODP, uh, there was uh, the uh, agreement to further, especially land to sea transect. Uh, this is new, it has been tried a few times, uh, but uh, never in uh, great uh, coordination. And that is a plan for the future uh, to collaborate uh, on these land sea transects. If you look back, um, one of the former projects we tried uh, jointly with IODP was drilling the Chicxulub crater um, here, uh, oops, in uh, the on offshore the Yucatan Peninsula in um, Mexico. And this provided really um, exciting uh, data. Um, one of the papers that have been published I really like is uh, the first day of the Cenozoic, where in detail the effect of uh, the impact. Uh, the um, collapse of uh, the crater, uh, the backwash of the tsunamis has been identified. And, and this is one of the spectacular results from um, IODP and ICDP uh, I have in mind. Um, so what's coming next? Um, there are uh, especially two projects. I mentioned already the Krafler Magma testbed. Uh, Paolo Papale is here one of uh, the leading uh, PIs and also in the trans amazon drilling project. Uh, Italian scientists are involved. Uh, this is coming this year if the COVID situation in uh, Brazil 
for bits. And as I just mentioned, we are hoping that in two years' time we are having the first uh, well uh, on Iceland to really recover core from magma and have a stabilized uh, well there. So um, let's have a look on how to submit a proposal to ICDP. How, how does this all work? Um, over the past years, ICDP has, meanwhile, uh, 350 proposals handled uh, and uh, pushed through a system where usually first a pre-proposal is submitted. It is reviewed by a science advisory group. This is an independent panel. We just had, during the past three days, uh, the meeting of this panel. And they look at unsolicited proposals. So an independent group of scientists just submits a proposal. The pre-proposal is asking for, um, is this really an idea that fits into the ICD, ICDP scheme of world-class site? Uh, then if um, the pre-proposal has been reviewed um, positively, a workshop proposal can be submitted. Uh, this is again uh, reviewed by SAC. A workshop is held and once a workshop is uh, done, a big scientific team has been assembled, then a full proposal can be submitted and uh, come to the stage of a drilling project. Um, in a nutshell, uh, you see here, this is pre-phase with the workshop and then the full phase uh, with all the uh, panels that are looking at that important and indifference to IODP, these workshops constitute an essential component of preparation of the full proposal because people uh, who have the, the idea can invite experts from all fields that are relevant, strengthen and broaden the project, establish this international team and prepare a detailed science, operational and budget plan. This is um, the bad thing about ICDP, I should mention that, because uh, the uh, proponents are also in charge of uh, operations and funding. I'm going to come to that in a minute, because ICDP's um, philosophy is um, that ICDP is funding only a minor share. You see here, for example, ICDP has invested over 50 million years, but in addition, 50 million dollars, sorry. Uh, but in addition, 220 million dollars came from third party funds. So ICDP's idea is a seed funding funding from ICDP and other project funding collected from national agencies and so on and so forth. So you may ask yourself, uh, how much money is ICDP providing? And you see here uh, that it's usual in, in the range of 20 to 70 percent, it is often 50 percent or something like that, except, except that uh, the proposals are very expensive. Then, of course, the percentage of ICDP's share is uh, minor. Um, so how much proposals are uh, submitted to ICDP? Um, this year, for example, there were eight uh, full proposals shown here in green, and you see here over the years that this is pretty constant in the past 10 years. There are a number of um, workshop proposals, something between eight and, and, and three, and um, a few pre-proposals um, always. Uh, so there is, there is competition because ICDP can fund maybe two, three, four projects a year, depending on the amount of money uh, that is available in the program. So, um, how is this all organized? I mentioned already this uh, science advisory group. Uh, a member from Italy is recently Lauro Chiaraluce. Fabio is a member of the executive committee. Uh, and these are the decisive panels that have a look to the strategic uh, strategy and, and all the proposals. And then there is this assembly of governors. And on the other hand, there is the executive director and the operational support group. Um, which uh, I am heading. And of course, everything is carried by uh, the scientific community that brings in proposals and conducts finally the projects. Um, so a few words about ICDP's uh, support and the operational support group. I mentioned already 
that ICDP funds projects. But in addition, ICDP also offers, offers operational support through the operational support group that is based in Potsdam. And what the ICDP operational support group is doing is supporting and planning because there is, an, there is a managerial expertise, also engineering expertise. We have a, we have a drilling engineer. We have a lot of uh, equipment um, that is provided uh, through uh, the so-called so ICDP equipment tool. We have um, pool, we have uh, downhole logging tools, we conduct downhole measurements, and we also invest in um, uh, research on these uh, downhole measurements. We have a readily accessible data management system, and uh, we conduct training courses. This is very important in order to be able to transfer the uh, know-how from uh, one project uh, to the other. And these training courses are are really a, a central part of um, the ICDP. Um, ICDP is investing in instruments. I mentioned already the equipment pool and uh, two of the most recent uh, developments that I would like to highlight here is uh, the uh, development of downhole measurement tools. Uh, logging while drilling is important. Um, we uh, have new tools recently uh, in operation that allow faster logging without a wire line. And then the data management system, ICDP's drilling information system has completely reprogrammed in order to have it in a mobile version, a new platform independent data management system is now in place that allows for registration and uh, distribution of initial science data um, during uh, drilling. So, a um, few words about uh, why I consider scientific drilling important. Uh, I mentioned already in the beginning that you often, once you drill, you don't see what you were expecting. Uh, so usually, hypotheses fail if uh, it comes to drilling. Um, it's a dirty job. I'm showing here this um, drilling mechanic uh, who is uh, spoiled with drill mud because I think it's, it's really a, a lot of work uh, to be invested by participants and leaders of projects in ICDP. But you learn a lot um, and you will be able to uh, falsify uh, your hypothesis. If you do lab work, if you do experiments, if you do surface geology, um, geophysics, uh, you, you are always somehow remaining in the dark. Uh, and therefore, scientific drilling is important because you get the samples, um, you get the data, and um, you get really insight into uh, the depths that in other ways um, is, is not possible um, to um, access. Um, so um, if you want to learn more about uh, ICDP, uh, there is of course the ICDP website uh, that uh, brings a lot of uh, information about the ongoing projects and it also provides access uh, to the ICDP data that are available online. The new science plan is out. Uh, I should also mention that jointly with IODP, uh, we are issuing uh, the journal Scientific Drilling, uh, which provides mainly reports on um, recently uh, drilled projects, early achievements, initial um, sample description work, and so on and so forth. And then uh, there is, of course, a, a large resource of um, media material, uh, for example, the ICDP primer, which is um, a detailed um, handbook on how to conduct uh, scientific drilling projects. Uh, there's media outreach material, and again, you can all find this um, on uh, the ICDP website. Uh, with these words, uh, I would like to thank you very much. And I'm happy to entertain um, any question. Thank you.
Thank you, Uli. Thank you very much also on behalf of the other organizers. This is very important, very interesting uh, for our community uh, because uh, I understood in the past few years, everyone know about IODP, but when you talk about ICTP, not all the science community is aware about this uh, great possibility to do science at a very high level. And because Italy is part of the system, it's really a pity, no? We would like to have more. Even if I, I have been impressed to see the numbers of Italians involved, it's a lot. <laughs> 251 are several, yeah. Um,